Hey folks, welcome back. This is a partially older video that I recorded that I was waiting to do the second half on at once. It's uh, some details on how I did the brake swap, <clears throat> the disc brake swap. So I will end up doing a part two to this later on, but I actually need to clear off some storage off my phone because I'm getting ready to post two other videos and my phone is full, so I can't finish the other two videos. So we've got two really cool videos coming up. I've got an interior almost put together, so you'll get to see that. Uh, it's a 2017 LTZ Chevrolet interior I'm putting in the truck. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and post this video. It's, it's most of the way there, but it's gonna have a part two, so just if you're looking for some disc brake swap information for an 8 lug, this this will be a good resource for you as at least when I was doing this, there wasn't a swap kit and there's not a whole lot of information out there so some of the stuff I really had to dig for. So hopefully this will help you. I don't know nowadays if there are kits available for the 8 lug swaps. If there are, please look into them and consider them. I know some folks are kind of against the kit swaps, but I'll tell you in experience, a lot of times it makes it so much easier and quicker. And you know, there's a lot to be said for ordering a box and it's showing up at your doorstep and you can do this in like a Saturday. So I'll tell you between not getting enough parts and having six frames in the back and then taking them off you got to clean them, you got to sand them, you got to paint them. I mean, it is a pain. So if you can get a kit that comes halfway painted to where you don't have to prep that much and you just top coat, you know, and you're bolting on, some people are against it, but I'm not one of those people. So if there is a kit available and you know about it for the eight lug trucks, please put it below. And if you've used it, uh, make comments about it because Hopefully one day they will make kits for this. Maybe they do, as mentioned, it would make it a lot easier. So that's, that is my thought on kits. And that applies to the half ton kits too. I don't have a master cylinder or brake lines or a boost. I'm not even sure what I'm doing for that yet. So that's why I'm telling you there's probably gonna be a part two. But this will get you down to the basics you know, this will get you up to that point. And from there, it's much easier. So uh, I hope this helps some folks. Just, you know, if you're trying to do a disc brake swap, just go ahead and watch this through. It'll help you substantially. One thing I want to clarify in the video though, is it all depends on what, what frame you have or you're using and what you want to get to, right? Because if you're going to power assist if you're going from disc brakes to power assist, you have a little bit different setup. And then if you're going from disc brakes to true power steering, it's going to be a, a different setup for that too. And by different, I, I don't mean substantially different. I just mean, you know, you might have a tie rod in different, you might have a drag link different, that kind of thing. But the overall synopsis of this story is if you're, if you're getting a donor, great, but if you have to go pull parts, the most important thing I'm going to tell you is you want the nut from the nut right here, spindle all the way up to either your power, your steering box and your power assist unit, which will most likely be gone. If it's not, you're kind of lucky or from the nut spindle and all the way back to your power steering box, which includes your drop bar for your idler arm. Make sure you get that, and I'll point that out in the video. Sometimes it's not clear cut, so just get more than what you need potentially and you'll be okay. Today I'm gonna to do a quick video detailing how to do a disc brake swap on an eight lug truck. This particular frame is a 67 frame that had the power assist, so I'm going to tell you how to do the disc brake swap and keep your power assist set up, and then I'm also going to explain 
which is what I ended up doing because I did all this setup at first to mate up with the power assist setup, but then I ended up switching over to the true power steering, which I'll get to in a second. So I'm gonna put a link and part numbers below. Understand that all those part numbers, for the most part, which you should be able to understand when you read through it, were for the 67 power assist setup. Now, I'll get to it in a second. Some of those part numbers may be different, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what you need to buy. So, either way, the best case scenario is that you find a donor. From that donor, I would recommend you get, no matter what, you want spindles, you want the nuts. If there's a washer, you want that too. You want to get this bracket that comes down to the idler arm. I would recommend just pulling this bracket off and the power and the steering box. That way you have all the stuff you need potentially and you can pull part numbers off of them and you can compare them. Try and get a VIN number off the frame. That way you can determine for sure if, if you don't have any other way to find out what year it is. If you don't already have a sway bar or you have the small sway bar, which I can't remember the dimensions, but just compare the two, you might want to grab that as well. We'll just start from the outside and work our way in. So this is a 77 spindle and the 77 dust shield. I bought the, the hub and rotor assembly, the cap, the bearings, and the seal from Napa, and the caliper. All, the, all those things are brand new, other than the spindle. You will need to change out the ball joints no matter what because they are different tapers than the old drum brake setup is. So this is where you got to pay attention depending on what you're doing. If you are linking up to the 67 power assist setup, you need to go from 77 to 67 right here is where your 67 starts at your inner tie rod. If you are going to do that, you're going to have to buy an adapter. This is a POL adapter, which I will link below, which I'll list below. The 77 and the 67 have different threads, so that's why you need the adapter. If you are not going to 67 power assist, that's why I'm telling you to take everything from the spindle all the way to the box. That way everything you buy is 77. So again, initially I did this setup to go to the power assist. So I have my adapter and then a 67 inner tie rod. And that is how I did the swap. Now this is a 77 part number, which I'll also put below. And that works perfectly. The only thing you have to do though Is drill a slot in your upper control arm or what you can do is cut this tab there's a little tab right here that fits in it and turns you can cut that tab off so you just have a flat face and you can put a bolt through it this hole right here where the brake line is gonna go is in the 67 through 70 frames so you don't have to drill that So anyway, what, what it actually turned out happening is I decided to go to the true power steering, so I pulled the drag link or the center bar off of the 77 frame and it, the tapers matched up with the 67 idler arm, so I went ahead and used it and actually these inner tie rod tapers matched as well. So you know, I, I might before I actually put this on the road. 
go ahead and buy the 77 tie rod connector and the inner tie rods. That way, if I for some reason forget someday, I'll just buy the 77 parts. But anyway, long story short, um, that is that is how you do it without buying a kit. I don't know if there's a kit available nowadays because there wasn't when I did this, at least that I could find. So once I decided to switch over to power steering, I put my center link in there. Now, the 67 frame, they do not have a notch right here like the other ones do. And prior to 67, I think it's the same, but I'm not 100%. So I made these little spacers, which are not even a quarter of an inch, which offset it, and my steering box clears the frame. I also had to notch my core support mount right here. And I did buy the pitman arm as well, new, all the wearable parts I, re I replaced. So I'm obviously I'm doing an LS swap. So this steering box is a redhead part number 2856. It's a three turn and that part number comes up as an 80 to 91 gear. The reason why I went with this is because these are actually O-ring style fittings, which will match up directly with the LS pump, so I don't need an adapter. If you, if you pull a steering gear off of a truck, you, you may have the flare style and have to adapt from the flare, and then on the LS side, it'll be an O-ring style. So anyway, it gets, it gets a little tricky, but that is why I went with this. So I don't have, I can essentially not have to worry about adapting to different styles. The Pitman arm is a Moog K143. Again, all the part numbers will be below. So that is just a general overview of how to do a disc brake swap and a power steering upgrade if you don't already have it. Once again, just for clarification, if you're looking through the part numbers, just remember that from that tie rod linkage on, make sure that you're getting the right part number because some of my part numbers listed were for the 67 setup. So once again, as always, I, I really hope this video will help someone. It certainly would have helped me uh, years ago when I actually started this whole deal. <laughs> but uh, anyway, if it helps you, if you like this sort of thing, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Please like the video. It does help me to help other folks. And uh, as mentioned, there will be a part two on this disc brake situation it'll be later on because as mentioned i'm in the middle of quite a few things on this project so we will come back to that stay tuned over the next week to two weeks there there will be two videos coming out uh related to interior swaps restoring seats making brackets redoing wiring and all that so i'm in the final stages of that it it looks awesome uh, so I think a lot of people really enjoy that video. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. I, I do monitor all the comments. This might be a video because there's so many different subs and so many different part numbers. You do have a question. So just put them down below. We'll get to them and we will see you shortly in the next couple weeks. Thanks.